when I counted the money that that evening, I made one hundred and sixty eight dollars. I mean, five year old make one hundred and sixty eight. <laughs> fantastic. In a couple of hours. Right. That's couple, amazing. Couple it hours. Anybody. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Ignition Path Podcast, where my, I'm your host, Kyle Goodnight. I've got a great guest today that's going to be able to save you a ton of money if you reach out to her and, and find out about her services. We met with a, a podcast match or something. Before I introduce you, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. If you hear something that is important that you may think that one of your friends or a coworker needs, don't forget to share this with them. Just hit that just hit that forward button and share it with them. So real quick, I want to introduce you to Sally Gimmon and uh, have her come on and talk all about her po entrepreneurial path and what brought her to this uh, this industry that she is uh, really taking. We, our introductory call was eye-opening. I can't wait to get to hear more about what she does and how she helps people and businesses with, uh, with everything she does. So Sally, go ahead and tell us who you are, what you do, where you came from, and uh, we'll get into it. Well, thank you, Kyle, for having me. My name is Sally Gimmon, and I'm actually a real estate investor. Uh, October 2018 was a watershed month for me. Three major things happened, and I had to change my life. So started real estate investing, and in 2019, still working full-time as a Medicare broker, making pretty good money doing that, I wholesaled seven pro uh, bank-owned properties nationwide. My mentor was teaching me that. I had set aside capital gains. I knew about that. I wasn't, you know, I, not that I didn't think of it. But what got me in trouble was I didn't realize my tax bracket. There are seven tax brackets from 10% to 37%, seven different tax brackets. The more money you make, the more you have to pay. My personal tax bracket went from 22% to 24%. And instead of paying $50,000 in capital gains, I owed the federal government $78,000 uh, $78, in capital gains. Yikes. Oh, my uh, goodness. My CPA asked for a meeting. He was going to set me up on a payment plan for you know for, for the rest of the year, and the way what I came up with my solution was, I took out a HELOC on my recently paid off house. You know, I was completely debt free. Woohoo! Yay, Sally! But defeated the right. focus, and you know, I, I I paid you know I paid what I owed. Well, it got me curious. I had read an article about the Rockefellers Spendthrift Trust. It's called The Office. It's seven generations old. It has almost 400 people under the same EIN or employee identification number, the, the, the number mm -hmm. that, that for your LLC type thing. And I'm like, I want to find yep. out more about yep. the Spendthrift Trust. It took me five months. In September of 2000, I started both my business Spendthrift Trust and my beneficial Spendthrift Trust. And personally, I've saved over uh, uh, six figures in taxes in three and a half years. And I was the first female um, uh uh, what do you call it, masterclass in my real estate group, very proud of that fact, to teach other investors how to save capital gains. And then I got t uh, tasked by my coach to open up my own business in March of 2022 uh, because small businesses need to know this too. I mean, I've got clients Absolutely. saving thousands of dollars. Wow, that's incredible. So you you were in the industry, and then you just found a niche inside of that that needed to be filled uh, with, uh, I think we even <laughs> said this on the, our introduction call, I'm like, it's a loophole or like a, a you know, or some form of loophole that you found that, that allows you to do this. So I do have some questions. I do have a trust, uh, you know, when it comes to what my wife and I put together for, uh, for when we first had kids and what would be, we're both in the medical field. So, you know, I'm actually not insurable in some case, in some people's eyes because I, I, I drive a medic and I'm inside of an ambulance. So I'm wow. somewhat you not think, insurable. You think you're the kind of person insurance. that need insurance completely. I'm insured. No, I'm insured. No, like, like my company insurance insures me I'm insured in case of a death with through them but uh, we're gonna go for above and beyond uh, insurance nursing and uh, probably not anymore I mean COVID nurses died too you know what I mean so exactly. you know um, they were just as at risk as we were uh, but it's probably because we drive fast in an ambulance and they're you know they look at all the numbers and all that stuff we finally found I mean they, someone would insure me if I wanted to pay a god-awful amount of money every month you know for my premiums but uh, the, the one that was affordable they're like no we, they won't touch you but they'll touch Jen you know they'll they'll do the nurse and I'm like okay I'm like she gets around just as bad as crap as I do, you know, but, but I, I digress on that. So, so when it comes to the path of starting your own business with this, was it something, have you always been an entrepreneur or did it just fall in your lap or did like, how did that work? Because the ignition path podcast is all about the entrepreneurial path of how you got to where you are. What was your, your previous uh, thought process on entrepreneurship? 
I, this is a true story. When I was five years old, living in Pittsburgh, um, I have um, oh, no Steelers. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, oh, 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 you have to know half my family. They they they, they bleed uh, gold and black. Uh, but um, I asked my mom for ten dollars to buy a lemonade stand. My dad was going to graduate school at Pitt. Uh, he was very very busy for the year, and I wanted to sell lemonade in my um, townhouse that was right next to Three River Stadium, the old stadium where the Steelers played. They wouldn't let me do yeah, this. I know. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was my next door neighbor. His name was Joe Green. He was not mean Joe Green. There were three Joe Greens at that time. <laughs> but this man was massive. He was six foot six, uh, the Could nicest been. guy in the world. <laughs> I don't know if he told the Rooney family. My, my older brother was going to a school where the Rooneys uh, did a lot of things. But Mr. Rooney uh, uh, knocked on the door. My mom, who's from Ireland, opens up the door and he goes, hi, do you know who I am? And she's like, no, should I? And he's like, you're the only person in Pittsburgh who doesn't know who I am. He goes, I would like your daughter to come and sell lemonade to my football players after spring practice this coming Saturday. My mom's like, can oh I get God. your name and number? And my grandfather, my grandparents who live in Pittsburgh, my granddad's like, who came to your door? Can I take your, can I take your daughter? You know, this is before <laughs> they won the Super Bowl. So Right, right, right. Oh, okay. So, so early so, 70s, yeah. This was uh, 1972, uh, April of 1972. Yeah. So the year I was born. Yep. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm aging myself. I was five, so yes. Yeah. So, um, so my granddad drives me over the card table. I tell my older brother I'm going to pay him five dollars to help me out. You know, we have everything. And then uh, Mr. Green, and he's like, "Don't call me Mr. Green. Call me Joe." I'm like, I can't, sir. You're you're my you're, you're an adult. You know, he's telling yeah, all the right. football players come over. You'll buy lemonade from her. You know, did this. My granddad got all these signatures, everything else. Uh, it was a fantastic day. My mom, I, you probably don't remember this, but bank books used to be have months on it. My birthday's in August, so I had an August mm -hmm. bank book. I owed her $10 for the yeah, lemon, right. lemonade stand. I owed her uh, $2 for the uh, uh, sugar. I owed my brother $5. I owed my granddad money, everything else. When I counted <laughs> the money that that evening, I made $168. I mean, five-year-old Mickey, $168. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> In a couple of hours, right? That's couple, amazing. Couple it hours. Anybody. And, and you yeah. know, I, I was wearing a patch. I had pigtails, you know, everything. So we put the lemonade stand into the sh uh, shed in the backyard. Um, the, you can look this up in history. Hurricane Agnes came up the Ohio River and flooded everything. I mean, it was a disaster. Oh, wow. Our backyard was completely flooded. And two days after the hurricane went away, we opened up the shed. And the, it was a cardboard lemonade stand. It was destroyed. And I can remember my mom saying, you made enough money. And I looked at her like, no, I didn't. I want to make more. And she's just like a five-year-old telling me that? that that's, that's crazy. So I've always, I don't know, my granddad did his own business, but my dad was a military officer. My mom was a nurse. I mean, I, I don't know where it came from, but I, I like being my own boss. It's so much fun. I, I don't like being somebody else's, um, oh, yeah. listening to somebody yeah. else. Yeah, I've I've had struggles with that too. I mean, I, I still work full time as a paramedic, and I do have a boss, but I've got like eight boss. I've, I've got a lieutenant and a captain and a, several chiefs, but that's different to me. That's not like uh, that's way different because we just we wait until mayhem happens and we go help. So it's just a lot different than I've been in the corporate America and and had a true bosses and and um, got along with my boss pretty good, but I didn't get along with some of the mentors that he put me with. But uh, so I ended up going back to the clinical realm. Uh, but yeah, let's get back to um, let's get back to the trust stuff. So, mm -hmm. so you do this through trusts or through mortgages? Like, I guess I just need a little this, clarification this is, on how you actually set this up. This is actually a, a trust. Mm -hmm. There, uh, ninety-seven percent of all trusts sold every year are what my mom and dad had, what Susie Orman talks on television, the family trust or the living trust. The uh, only thing, probably what I have, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, no offense, Kyle. Probably because that's what most people know about. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, it would back. I think we did it back in two thousand and one, two, right around there, two thousand two and two thousand three time frame. Right after my my son was born in two thousand one, we did it right after that. Well, it's a smart thing to do. I'm not making fun of the of that trust, but this is no, not no. your mom yeah. and dad's trust. This trust is okay. what the Rockefellers, the Duponts, the Carnegies, U.S. presidents have. Um, the living trust. The only thing it does is avoid probate, and then it dissolves. You know, um, you and your wife are probably both trustees. Whoever's the last one. Not to wish you ill will. Whoever's the last one to survive, no, I get it. And then it's We're dissolved. medical. We get it. <laughs> yeah. Correct. So your your son can't use the trust. I mean, like that doesn't go to the next generation. Um, our tax oh. code 
in, uh, went into effect in February of 1913, and the super rich families back there, the, the Rockefellers, the Carnegies, the DuPonts, made sure they could save taxes. Well, if they can save taxes, why shouldn't we? So with the right. Spendthrift Trust, um, I, I work for a private law firm. Paul Benson was a Harvard law professor. 76 years ago, he wrote these five different trusts uh, that saves different ways. They've, um, none of the trusts have ever been audited, and it, four ways it's going to save you. It's going to save you taxes year after year, generation after generation. You'll never pay them back. It's going to keep your information private. Um, you know, an LLC or S Corp or a C Corp, that's statutory law. I can go to the Secretary of State or the Corporation Commission of, your, of the state and research them. 40% of all LLCs get sued every year. Third way, um, hopefully this won't happen, but all lawsuits become frivolous. One of my clients who has 120 doors in Chicago, literally was driving his humongous RV, never seen it, but I can guarantee you it was a quarter of a million dollar RV. He couldn't slow down for traffic. He hit the car in front of him mm. and it pushed that car in front of, into the car in front of her. No one's injured, but one car got squished. The, uh, the insurance card had the RV and had his trust name on it. His Illinois driver's license had Patrick's name on it. Six weeks after the accident, he gets a lawsuit for half a million dollars for pain and suffering. You know, she was injured, injured but she wants to get money because she sees this expensive RV. Has yeah. no idea yeah. he's got all this real estate in uh, Chicago. And the only thing he had to do was send the first page of the trust to her attorney and saying, this is, uh, you know, you can't sue me. That lawsuit went away and became frivolous. I mean, it saved him a half a million dollar wow. lawsuit. Um, and then the fourth thing. Wow. I, I, I don't know if your audience knows about this. Have you heard about the Corporate Transparency Act from the Treasury Department yet? I, I haven't. No, I have not. This is if you are an LLC doing business as a corporation or S Corp, you're going to have to file paperwork with the Treasury Department by December 31st of 2024 or, be or could be fined $10,000 or two years in jail. There are some lawsuits out there. I don't know if that's, you know what's going to happen, but it is law right now. Uh, with the Benson Financial Trust, you're exempt from doing this. So a new client of mine, uh, he has 44 doors, a real estate investor. I just saved him a headache. You know, it's not hard to do the paperwork, but it's going to take time. He doesn't have to do 44 uh, corporate transparency acts, and he's just like, I don't even want to do one, let alone 44, because yeah. they want a lot of information. <laughs> Right, right. So when it comes to someone like myself, it's a, I'm a small business guy. I'm a voiceover actor. I, you know, I'm not doing that full time. Um, you know, I do have a, I do have the older, most likely the older trust. I think that we, I think we put that our, well, I think it just tells where, where the kids go, but they're all adults now. So it, it's kind of a moot point, but like the kids would have gone to my in-laws uh, if anything happened to us prior to them becoming adults. Um, so I think that's the word agenda. I haven't looked at it for, I mean, I put it in a box. That, that's a, Most people do that. Exactly. 2003, and I probably haven't looked at, I mean, I've looked at the outside of it since then, but I don't think I've opened it up and reviewed it. My, my financial advisor may have reviewed it, but I, I, I have to double check with him. But when it comes to, when it comes to that, um, that type of trust and then me being a small business, not making that much money at it, you know what I mean? Me starting up my new business. I do have it. I do. I am doing business as, you know, under my, because, because podcasting and podcast coaching can fall under voiceover because I do voiceover for podcasts. So I can Correct. kind of keep it in the same realm. So I'm, I'm good with that. But when it comes to that kind of a small business and then the fact that I have a, a, a county job or a, you know, a state job, if you will, where I, where I pay taxes into PERS, it's not, I don't pay taxes into, uh, into social security because we're a, a private entity. So I'm not that I didn't do social security, prior to that job when I had other jobs that did pay into Social Security because I have some in there. Uh, but when it comes to me and not having all these, I have one property, the one I'm sitting in right now, and the bank still owns most of it. You know, like, like where does that, where does what you're doing and what your, what your company offers, where does it, where do I fall in that realm uh, along with anybody else that's listening that's a little more small potatoes, if you will? You're, you're doing things. Give yourself credit. If you don't mind my asking, Kyle, are you in Illinois? Where, what state are you in? Ohio. Ohio. I, I do Ohio. that. So okay. just to give you an idea, there are four ways to file your taxes. Single, head of household, uh, married jointly, which you would be doing, and then married separately. When you go out to my uh, free course at uh, sallygibbon.com, uh, there's going to be a chart there. Single is the most expensive uh, way to file. 
if you were making eighty thousand dollars in your voice uh, uh, um, uh, voiceovers, uh, podcasting, and everything else, you would save twelve thousand nine hundred and sixty dollars per year with the Spendthrift Trust. Mm. Now, being married. Your, your taxes are going to be a little bit lower, so you won't save just as much, but that just gives you an idea. I, I use the $80,000 yeah. to give someone an idea. And okay. you know, that's a lot of money, twelve thousand, almost yeah. $13,000. That can change your life. Oh, heck yeah. So so until I get to that point, do I not worry about this kind of trust? Or is it like, is it something that it should definitely be looked at as we get to a certain income uh, uh, on our entrepreneur path? Or or is it conglomerate, like meaning if, it, if it's a combined $85,000 between my, my full-time job, my voiceover and podcasting job and my wife's job. Is it, is it combined or is it only for your LLC and your, and your, your own, your own business? The trust will not hold an LLC or S corp. Again, that's statutory law. The trust is on the federal level. So we, I can only work with uh, 1099 income earners or people who own the business. Um, is your wife working a W2 job or is she a 1099 income earner? No, W2. W-2. So again, because with W-2, your, your situation being a, a paramedic, you know, a little bit different, but you know, uh, W-2. I'm still a W-2. I still get a W-2. Yeah. But it's just my, my, I don't pay into social security. I pay into OPERS. Yeah. So You'll have a pension then, right? Yeah. Yes. So a pension won't be in the trust either because, you know, it, it, pensions have different rules. You know, um, my granddad was in um, a Pittsburgh SEAL pension for uh, uh, 20 years after he retired. But um, if it's a 1099, so what you're doing with your voiceover, with um, your coaching, right. with everything else, when you start making some uh, some money with it, the main thing you want to know about because of the lawsuits and because of keeping your information private, start looking at it when you and your wife feel comfortable about it. You know, this is not something you need ASAP, but gotcha. it's not taught in school. I, I went to undergraduate school. I went yeah. to undergraduate What school. is? They don't even teach how to balance a checkbook in school. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So get, get not me, that we balance me, checkbooks anymore, but. <laughs> well, well, you have to balance. You have to know what your uh, balance is. You know, to give you an idea, yeah. this is a true story that happened uh, a week before Memorial Day. Uh, uh, she's a mother. She's got three kids. One kid's in school. Two kids are too young to be in school. Uh, they live in Texas. Her husband's making $75,000 a year. They live okay. She started digital marketing. In the first five months of 2024, she made $100,000 doing digital marketing on, okay. at working. Fantastic. Yeah. Good for her. She's making money. Yeah, absolutely. She, she made their taxes go from 12% up to 22%. And then if she continues to do what she does for the next six months or seven months of the year, she's going to make their taxes go up to over uh, 24 per, or 24%. Their taxes, their federal taxes, because Texas does not have uh, state income taxes, are going to go, and I'm using round numbers, are going to go from 8900 all the way up to over $33,000 a year. And she's just like, well, what can happen? And I, and, you know, I, I, I gave her the figures. You know, she set up a thirty-minute tax breakthrough session with me, and I'm like, here's how much I can't help you from January first through May thirty-first. You know, that's that you're going to have to pay taxes on that. But going forward, this is how much we'll save you. You know, she's got to decide if it's appropriate for her, but she'll save over ten thousand three hundred dollars for the remaining of two thousand twenty-four. And then 2025, the full year, she will save that $33,000 a year. And she's just like, wow. She goes, it's almost, you know, I can retire my husband in two years if I continue doing digital marketing. I'm like, you can retire your husband now. You just made $100,000. I wish I was making, you know, that's a lot of money. So, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, real quick, I don't, and this is, this is totally up to you. I'm going to ask you about your business and how you actually make money doing this. Is it mm -hmm. like, you know, because is that an appropriate question? It's and if it's not, question. no big deal. We'll shut yes. it down. Because, uh, you know, like when we when it comes to financial advisors or when it comes to uh, investment people, the people that help you invest, like Merrill Lynch or whatever, I mean, I'm just, I'm just throwing names out of investment places. You know, they get a percentage of each transaction. Like, so, so how do you actually get commissions and have grown this as a business? Is that in side of the law firm or is it only coaching services and you charge for that or is it a percentage of what they save like like how does it work um i have a contract with the law firm i'm an independent contractor with the law firm when i started both my business and beneficial trusts the gentleman who sold the unfortunately he passed away back in november of 2023 um he he was my up he was my i don't want to say upline because that's like a affiliate marketer but i, I worked under him 
now that he's passed away, um, I do pay for um, the team. So, and I also pay for the CPA to do that. Um, when you file, when you have any of the trusts, you'll file a 1041 tax return, not a 1040 tax return. So this is all part of the I information. And uh, I, I have my clients pay the law firm directly. It's either going to be by certified check or by wire. Okay. And then I get paid. And from that, I do uh, pay out these different things. Um, there is a whole team that's working with you. Uh, one person's going to get you the new EIN number and a letter. Uh, we do suggest you know go you, you go go to any bank you want. One of my clients, this is a true story. She's down in Florida. She's at the Seashell uh, of uh, Credit Union that has two locations, and that you know she's been a customer there since they opened. And she's like, I love my I love my Seashell uh, Credit Union. Other clients are at Wells I'm, I'm Wells Fargo or uh, other banks. It's your decision where you go. There's a whole team that walks you through to make sure you know what you're doing because we don't mm -hmm. want you to spend money and then just not use it. You know, we want you to know what's happening. And, you know, um, I make I make good money at it. I do have a second. I, I do have a, a discount if someone buys a second trust, you know, because most people go with the, either the business trust or the beneficial trust, depending what they're doing. And then some of my business, a lot of my business owners are making such great money or saving such great money. They now want to start um, helping in real estate investors. Uh, do you invest in real estate at all besides your own house? Uh, uh, not anymore. I'm, I, w I used to be a part of my mom and dad's business a long time ago when before mom died. Um, uh, they owned 26 properties and helped manage it with them. But wow. we don't. We we liquidated it. We liquidated everything when she couldn't qualify for disability um, two years before she passed away. So dad basically just flushed everything just got rid wow, of Wow, the capital gains they had to pay, unfortunately. <laughs> well, uh, he took a loss on most properties. We had a lot of properties that weren't worth much. And plus it was, well, it was right at right 2000, it was 1998. So yeah, I'm not sure on all okay. that. Okay, so. well, that's the other thing, you know, just what you talked about with disability. This is not under your social security number. This is under a new gotcha. EIN or a tax ID number. So it doesn't affect you. Um, one of my clients, he's in my real estate group, this is a sad story. He lives in Oregon. Two years ago, he went to a church picnic or something, and someone made devil eggs. I don't know if it was too hot outside or if someone didn't uh, wash their hands correctly. He got kidney disease. He, you know, he's on, he, he, yeah. you, you know when things go bad. Salmonella, you know? right? So, oh. except, I mean, he's 34 years old. I, now, he's thir now he's 36 years old. And he his uh, dialysis, he's got to get it three times a week. His dialysis is costing him, if he did it on his own, $14,000 a month. It's expensive. I didn't know dialysis was so much. Yeah. He was going to have to sell all his real estate. So he started <laughs> the Spendthrift Trust. His Social Security number is still has his Medicare, uh, Medicaid and Medicare because he's now – you have to wait two years to get on – um, um, well, uh, kidney disease you get on right away. So his Social Security uh, is going to pay for his dialysis. Everything's in the trust, and they don't know what he's doing there. And he's just like – I. He's saving, you know, he's saving the taxes on his real estate, but he still gets his dialysis paid for, and he loves it. Another one of my clients, um, unfortunately, his dad has cancer, and again, there's a um, usually a two-year delay to get onto Medicare if you're under 65. You got to prove what's going on. The the father, I didn't know cancer drugs were so expensive, but the son, the adult son, put the father as a beneficiary, and he's helping his dad go through cancer treatments at uh, Cancer Hospitals of America. You know, I, where I lived in Arizona, it was just down the street from me. So um, there's so many different ways this trust will help you. If you're over wow. if you're over 65, this is kind of a crazy thing. Um, how much do you know about Medicare? Not not much. I mean, not, not much at all yet. <laughs> I mean, I'm, yes, I'm not quite there yet, so I don't know much. My, my you know, my in-laws are over 65, and, and they're, they deal with that. But, um, yeah, so but go well, ahead. If you're over 65 or under 65 and on Medicare, the, the federal program, not the state program, and you make more than $91,000, you're going to get charged what's called IRMA, I-R-M-A-A, -A, where your Part B, which is your doctors and your tests, you have to pay completely out of pocket for it. It's expensive. And so the, we, the trust, every October, the IRS goes back two years. So October 2023, they went back to 2021 to look at all 1040 tax returns to see if anybody who's on Medicare made more than $91,000. If they did, they got this huge bill that, hey, you got to pay this now. Um, because a trust file, any of the trusts file a 1041 tax return, 
they, they don't know about it. So um, I'm not trying to skirt the system. I'm using what cr current laws there are. I mean, the Spendthrift Trust is in the IRS ta tax code 643B. The Spendthrift Trust has been in front of the United States Supreme Court on two separate occasions. I mean, this is this is contract law. It's out there, and the rich people know it. I just want to teach regular regular people how, how to save money. <laughs> Right, exactly. So, what uh, last question? Then we'll wrap things up, and we'll uh, you'll you'll I can I'll ask you how to, to to reiterate everything where people can find you and and save this kind of money. So, because that's important, that's what we're here for yes. to to uh, highlight you and what you do and your superpower. Superpower is saving people tax money. So that's what's great about you. Um, you know, I don't know if you got your cape on the back. You can show us later. But uh. <laughs> Afghan's behind me. So, but yes, it's my cape. But, so. There you go. There that you got Afghan cape. That that's perfect. Here. I'm going to go to chat. GPT after this, I'm going to make a picture of you flying with an Afghan. You know that? No. <laughs> so, um, so real quick, when it comes to like, uh, what happens inside of like Roth IRAs and 401ks and pensions, like how does, what does anything, what you do help with those taxations when it comes to that time later in life and that Great retirement question. time? Great question. Um, right now, I, I was guilty for, of this too. I have uh, Roth IRAs, and but the majority of my money is in what's called a traditional IRA. Um, I okay. do work with uh, several uh, um, insurance agents. That's considered a qualified plan. If you take that money and put it into an annuity, you're okay. But if you want to grow that annuity, uh, that's when you start getting taxed on things. If you just take the money out at, uh, before 59 and a half, you got to pay 10%. But even after, uh, you know, let's say you're, you're 70 years old and you're going to take your um, a 401k, your traditional 401k money out, that's when taxes happen. With uh, Because it's um, a qualified plan, I can set up, if you ha have the trust before you move the money into the annuity, we can save the taxes. It, uh, uh, we have to, the, again, the financial pl planners I'm working with, they know how to do this. There's certain paperwork to fill out. And then you can grow that money super fast, and then you can make that money, uh, and then you don't have to worry taxes on it. If it's a Roth IRA, keep the Roth IRA. Keep using it. Um, you do have to take a dis distribution at seven, uh, 70 and a half, you know, you, but since it's um, after-tax dollars, you don't pay any taxes on it. Unfortunately, with a pension, I just tell people with a pension, keep it separate. I've got, uh, as clients, I've got four uh, school teachers. Actually, one of them's just retired. She's got this great pension, but she's a real estate. She's got 14 Airbnb houses, and I'm like, just keep them separate. You know, let, let your let your um, pension pay, pay you directly as her, her name's Cheryl. Let, let the pension pay you, and then now with your trust, it's a different name. That That's where all the uh, money will go through. Gotcha. All right, cool. Well, thank you. That's a that's a plethora of information. This whole episode is uh, is full of information that that sparked more questions. But I, I like to keep it uh, nice and short and sweet, and just so I completely understand. Get to know you have you never and... heard of this before. I, I agree. <laughs> yeah. So you know, give Sally a call or text. Uh, she's going to get ready to tell you what how to get a hold of her. Go ahead and tell everybody about how they get a hold of you and and where to go to find out this information, and we'll go from there. Excellent. Do you have you ever heard of Six Sigma? The the uh, oh consulting yeah company? oh absolutely. Well, they 100%. just have a, yep. they have a brand new platform out out there called the Great Discovery. It just went live March fifteenth, two thousand twenty four. So if you go out to my name www.sallygimmon.com, no hyphen, no period, just all squished together. I have a free course on the Great Discovery. It's a presentation. It's got three articles from Forbes magazine. It's got the chart where I I, I looked you up in Ohio how much you would be making things like that. That's there. And then my website is www.thetrustisyou.com. Um, I do a live every Monday evening at 8 p.m., uh, question and answer, because people people have questions. They're like, this, this, I, I yeah. actually had a CPA who said to me, this can't be true. The, you know, like, today I had a conversation <laughs> with a financial yeah. planner, and he's like, <laughs> give me more information, you know, because because right, we're going right. to help his clients save thousands and thousands of dollars a right. year. And, you know, because now, when you say you go, yeah, when you say you go live, is that on Facebook or on Zoom link? Uh, Zoom. Or do, do Zoom. people get access? To, okay, so Correct. they access that from your so website? On Monday night, uh, it's the trustisyou.com slash Q okay. like Queen, N like November, A like Alpha, uh, Q&A. And that's just a, a – okay. I usually go on, do a quick presentation, about 10 minutes, and then open it up for qu uh, question and answering because I want – 
My goal is to help as many U.S. business owners, U.S. 1099 income earners, and U.S. investors learn this information because it's not taught in school. Right, right. Well, very, very cool. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you for coming on, Sally. You've been a plethora of information. I'm sure it's going to help someone out there that listens to it. And, and when I start making my $80,000 a year in voiceover, I'll give you, you a will. call. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> That's why I podcast. I wasn't expecting, I never ever wanted to be a host on a podcast. And then it just kind of morphed into me being a host and, and me enjoying it and me getting to meet so many people like yourself and others that, especially when it comes to the Ignition Path podcast, other than my other podcast, which is Elevate Podcast, shameless plug to my own other <laughs> podcast, which is on the first responder, uh, the first responder mental health uh, crisis oh, that, that we're having that's right now. That's so, needed. So I have a I have a podcast on that as well. It's called Elevate with the uh, the number eleven as the L, so it looks like Elevate, but it's number it's two elevens and the or it's two ones and the two ones represent the on and off duty persona of the first responder because it's not all about what we see in the first responder world. It's about our families and yes. and not being at home and all that stuff. So so I have two podcasts which I enjoy both of them. They're both passion projects for me, and uh, uh, this one is uh, more appropriate to grow my business on. Uh, uh, so I've split the other one off to as, as a, not a hobby, but I still think it's very helpful. And I put up weekly episodes and I've got a backlog and got a lot of people lined up to come on that and had some great people on that. But this one I'm growing my business around and that's, uh, and that's with podcasting and podcast coaching and uh, another shameless plug. If anybody wants to start a podcast, I know that, that Sally has talked about it in the past and m may possibly do it in the past. And I'd hope she would uh, uh, have this relationship with me to, uh, to reach out to me and, and just like I'm going to reach out to her when I do that, when I make that when I make those when I need those trusts whether that be you know closer to retirement I'm only eight years away from retirement uh, I, actually the one that I'm gonna I want to I may want to get you on a phone call with my in-laws because they're in their 70s they own a property in the, at the beach and oh, if there's nice. we can just see yeah, they, we just, you know, he retired from Anheuser-Busch. She retired from the Limited. So, like, it'd be nice to see, like, like talk to them, like, have an appointment with them, like, one of your free you consultations. Is it just see, their house? Yeah. Or are they, are they, is it like a vacation rental that they uh, they rent out? It's a rental. No, they rent it out, yeah. Well, we could help them. And the yeah, they make thing, money on that, it, yeah. Uh, that yeah. nice plug, that um, you become beneficiary. So, it's just one trust. So, it's your in-laws. And then when they mm -hmm. pass away... Then you and your wife become the trust, uh, the associate trustees, and it starts. And then well, it goes to your children and everything. My else. wife and my wife and her brother. Yeah, my wife and her brother. I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not associated with. I mean, I'm married into the family, so you know it would it would have to be hey, that path. Beer. But no, yeah, nonetheless, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nonetheless, it would be it'd be something that uh, I definitely think that because uh, that's the first person I thought of when you started talking about the number, uh, you know, the, the amount of money someone makes on a property and what to do to protect it. You. Know, Know, and that's exactly. the big thing, the protection. The yeah, protection. Yeah, and, yeah. and then also not not to, well, you're EMT, so you're used to this. When someone passes away, if they're a state, it, you know, you're going to have to pay taxes on the estate. So your wife and her brother, uh, we can save them the taxes on that too because all the uh, inheritance tax goes away too. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So something something in our future for sure. So, I, all I right, Sally, thank, you, thank you, you so much for coming on. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on the Ignition Path podcast where we uh, we, we, we represent uh, the, the path of the, the entrepreneur. We bring entrepreneurs on and talk about their path and their, their superpower and let them let them discuss their business and, and how they get a hold of people, which we've done all of that stuff. So I think this is a, a complete and wrapped up show. And uh, anything else you want to say, Sally, before I just we sign off? you having me thank you so much and i hope you have a wonderful uh wonderful year hopefully we can save your in-laws some money <laughs> right sounds great sounds great and for those igniters that are watching thank you so much for tuning in we we enjoy any comments any any suggestions go ahead and don't hesitate to put that stuff in the in the youtube comment section i'm totally down with comments good bad and different you know if they don't like my hair that's fine i mean you know, I don't, <laughs> I've been over, I've been over my looks for years. So, uh, so, but either way, you know, uh, you know, comments are comments. They are what they are. And uh, I'll be happy to answer questions. Uh, 
if there are anything about what Sally has, I can I can forward those to Sally. She could see the comments, of course, because I keep it public. But uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit that bell for notifications so you know when we have another episode or we go live, which is going to be happening uh, hopefully sometime soon. And uh, and thanks for tuning in to the Ignition Path podcast. Sally, thanks so much. Take care. Have a good day. Thank you for listening to Ignition Path, fueling the entrepreneurial fire.